So maybe you've just taken up sewing or you've seen a few videos and you're feeling inspired to take it up or maybe you're coming back to it after a while or maybe you're just curious about what I have in all of my stuff. I talk about all the stuff I have in my kit and I'm gonna go through all of the items and I'm gonna rank them based on how important and essential that they are. So I'm gonna start with like the foundational elements. I'm gonna go to like the nice to have items, the things that I find useful but that I got kind of later on in my sewing journey and then I'm gonna go through some final things that are like extremely nice to have but not essential to do any sewing ever. There are ways around needing those sorts of things. So I think the first thing, if you're gonna be doing any sewing, is that you need a good pair of scissors. These are my scissors that I got from my mom as a gift a long time ago. They are Ginger scissors, which is a special kind of brand. And they are really super duper sharp. I think they're made in Germany, maybe? Italy, they're made in Italy. Sorry, Italians out there. These are specifically designed to be able to cut through fabric and that's important because like regular scissors, they're, they're not going to be sharp enough to get through fabric. So I think that you really need a good pair of scissors. It's worth investing, I think, because if you have a dodgy pair of scissors and you're trying to cut some really nice fabric and it doesn't go very well, then that's going to be bad and we don't want that to happen. The other thing that you're definitely going to need is some pins. I just bought these pins a couple of weeks ago. They're called fancy pins and I love them. I actually had some other pins that were a bit cheaper and they were not very good and they were not going through the fabric properly. So I would also say get the best quality you can find because that's important too. They will last longer and they also won't damage your fabric. Controversial as well. I'm not gonna say that a bare essential thing to have is a pin cushion and I will talk about that in a minute. The other thing you're definitely gonna need to get started is some thread. Always in my stash, I keep a white thread and a black thread. I just buy the biggest one that's available because those are the two most common threads that you're gonna need or something really dark. You can get away with sewing a black garment with navy blue thread. I have done it before, breaking all the fashion rules. I have a lot of thread now in my stash that I've gathered over the years from different things that I've made when you need to kind of get a matching thread for top stitching. When I was learning to sew, I would always sew the whole garment with the matching thread. And I don't really know why I did that. I think that's just how my mom did it. So then I just kind of thought that that's, that's what you're meant to do. But if it's a light garment, for example, you can just use a light thread. Or if it's a dark garment, you can just use a black thread most of the time. Unless you're gonna see the stitching on the inside, then you probably want it to match. It's also usually more affordable to buy just the black or the white. Once you start getting into all the colors, they are a little bit more expensive per, per. What's the word for this? Spool? Oh, maybe it'll come back to me. The next essential, absolutely essential thing is something to measure with. I regularly use both a tape measure and my sewing ruler, which has this little red gauge on it. So you can measure and mark certain widths and then you can just put that red doodad wherever you need it. And it helps you with like transferring markings at the same thing. You, you kind of can just go on autopilot a little bit. And then also it's, it's important to have a, a soft tape measure because rather than just like measuring things around your house, when you measure a, a body, if you're sewing your own clothes, you will need to take your own measurements a lot of the time. And bodies are not made of flat planes. They're made of lovely, round, beautiful shapes. And so in order to get accurate measurements, you need something that can go around those shapes. To go with your lovely threads and to make sure you have uh, something to sew your garments with, you will need some needles. These are some ancient needles. I don't know where they came from. I inherited these from, from someone. Wah, wah. You will need one of these. Even if you are just doing machine stitching, you're obviously gonna need a sewing machine. You could take it back to the middle ages and sit every night and hand sew all your clothes. It's gonna take a long time. If you're into that, I am so keen to see the things that you create. And if you document that process, then please let me know because that would be amazing. But yeah, I think we're all on board with machine sewing these days. When you are using a sewing machine, you need to make sure that you are changing your needle regularly. I don't change my sewing needle regularly enough. And also be aware that there are different kinds of sewing needles for different kinds of garments. Uh, these ones are just, universal assortments, but there are also special needles that you can get for sewing denim and for sewing jersey. Those different needles have different strengths and also a different tip so that you don't ruin your fabric as you're sewing. And one last thing that I forgot to mention, but you'll definitely need is an iron and an ironing board. 
So those were all of the really, really bare minimum essentials that you need if you're gonna be doing any sort of sewing. The next tier are things that are really nice to have. Uh, what did I call it on my list? Also great and very useful. <laughs> So the first also great and very useful item is a rotary cutter. And you'll also need a, a cutting mat for these. These are an alternative to using scissors and it's just a single circular blade that kind of acts like a trundle wheel along your fabric. And you can, you pull back the little guard and you just trace around where you need to cut. Very handy if you're cutting sort of like slippery fabrics and you need the pattern piece to stay in the same spot. I didn't have one of these for a while and I still managed to get by with scissors. I would say that sometimes I think there's this perception that sewing is really hard and complicated but my view is that it's like a jigsaw puzzle that someone gives you instructions on how to put together. And so if you have like the bare minimum essentials to get started then that's fine. The next thing that's nice to have but not as completely essential, very useful, is a pin cushion. I've noticed lately that there are a lot of sewing people that only use clips. I have also a little pot where I keep my clips. I think these are really popular among quilting people. I don't know, I always use pins. Even if you have bought pins and you don't have a pin cushion, it doesn't matter. You can just leave them in a little dish or in a little container. Uh, sometimes people have these like magnetic pin cushions, which are pretty cool. If you don't have one, then it's not a hurdle to you starting. But yeah, very useful. And also I didn't have a wrist pin cushion for ages and I started using this one regularly. I don't know, maybe, probably about a year or a year and a half ago. And now I'm at the point where I'm so used to having a pin cushion on my wrist that I have genuinely almost stabbed myself in the wrist with a pin because I didn't realize I didn't have my pin, pin cushion on and I was taking a pin out of something. And I needed to put it somewhere and almost stabbed myself in the hand. I have not done that yet, but I probably will. So yeah, I'll make sure I get that on film for you. <laughs> These clips are very useful, especially when you're holding together something like kind of small, kind of tricky that you can't really get around. I don't love using them that much because I feel like they're not as easy to get under the sewing machine foot. I, like you have to take them out. Whereas if you're using pins, you can actually, there is a method to put a pin in that is fairly safe. So you can actually stitch over the pin without needing to take it out. And that keeps your fabric in exactly the right spot. One thing I forgot from part one is another essential item. And that is an unpicker. You will need one of these because you will make mistakes and you will need to unpick things. Other people call it a seam ripper. I call it an unpicker. Maybe that's an Australianism. I don't know, but I call it an unpicker and I use it every time because I always fuck something up. That's just the way it is. And then we learn and then we don't do it again. Well, we try not to do it again. Next thing on the very useful but not essential list is another type of scissors. This is a type of embroidery scissors and this is like a little clipper thingy. Uh, this is rusted on the tips, you can see. That's how little I use this. I bought it in like a set of stuff and I just use these guys. These are actually like super sharp and they kind of freak me out. Especially because like that, all of that blade is exposed all the time. And these are just the most like basic embroidery scissors you can get. <laughs> when you Google embroidery scissors, this is the thing that'll come up. I'm also gonna link all of these things in the description. If you see something, if you come across something that you don't have that you think is gonna be useful, go and head to those links and you can buy stuff there if you want to. No pressure. Ooh, drinks break. I'm drinking Canotto. Do you guys know what Canotto is? I love Canotto. Where are the Italians? Shout out to, to Italy for inventing the best drink ever. Okay, the next thing that is also nice and very useful is a fabric pen or tailor's chalk. These are things that you can use to mark out certain bits on your fabric. Very useful, very, very useful, but really not essential to get started. On a pattern, there'll be certain markings that you'll need to match up as you go and sew along. A lot of the time you can just mark them with a one of these guys, but if you don't have either of these guys, there is another way to do it. And this is how I did it for a really long time because I just didn't have these items. Uh, this is just the way I was taught by my mom and it works. Basically all you do is you take a regular hand sewing needle and a long bit of thread, usually in a contrasting color so that you can easily identify it later and pull it out. And you just go through those pattern markings with a bit of thread and you snip it off and then that's your little marker. It can stay there while you're sewing. It's not essential to have a fabric pen or chalk to mark those things out. You can just use, you can just use thread. The next thing that's very useful and also very nice is to have some spare bobbins. This is my little old spice 
container that I keep my spare bobbins in. When you get a sewing machine, it'll come with a couple of these bobbin guys. And I think I had at least three and I've lost two of them. You can get by with just the couple that your machine comes with. That's totally fine. But what I like to do is I like to keep one all the time that's full of my white thread and another one all the time that's full of my black thread. I think they're, they're actually with my machine right now. And then when I have to do some sort of top stitching, I like to have some spare bobbins where I can just put a little bit of thread on just for that top stitching. So it's very useful if you have spares because then you don't have to spend time taking your bobbin out, re-winding it. And you can just use any old container. You really don't need anything special. Just use things that are lying around your house. The next thing that's very useful, very nice and also very useful is having some sort of quilters ruler or a straight edge where you can easily use your rotary cutter to cut along with your cutting mat. Obviously, you don't want to cut scratches in your table. You can if you want to, that's up to you. I bought this thingy, which is kind of like a combined curve with a right angle edge. That's what I use. You can also get these that come in just a long rectangle. If you're gonna be doing a lot of quilting, it's very handy because then you can easily just cut lots of straight lines. I, I find this very useful. You would have seen me use this a lot in my videos. Okay, two more also great and very useful items. One of them is pinking shears. If you don't know what they are, they cut things into a zigzag. So you can see the teeth are a zigzag. And that's a way to finish off a raw edge of fabric so that it doesn't fray. Uh, I often use pinking shears on things like silk, patterns, other things that are kind of hard to overlock or finish off the edge on. And pinking shears are useful. I don't use these very much. These were also, and I inherited these from my mother-in-law as well. And then the last thing, which I don't own, is pattern weights. You can buy special little discs to hold your pattern pieces down as you're cutting. Uh, I don't I don't have pattern weights. If I am using my cutting mat and putting a pattern piece flat on some fabric, I just use kind of whatever's lying around. You can just use like a little dish, bowl, anything heavy, like a vase. I don't know, you could use like a banana if you wanted to. So finally, these are some items that are really not essential. You could make so many garments without any of these things. But also if you do have them, then they make your life marginally easier. The first one is these little magnetic seam guides. Some machines I have seen don't come with the little seam guide markings on the plate near where the needle is on the sewing machine. Oh my God, brain, come on. <laughs> and if you do have like a funky seam allowance that you need to kind of remember where it is and you haven't made some of the marking, then these can be kind of handy. My mum got me these, which I'm very grateful for, but I honestly don't use them that much because the magnetic part of my sewing machine is not really very big, so. I find that these don't actually, uh, they don't stay. They kind of start to move around because my uh, machine is mostly plastic. And my mom's machine is a bit fancy and it's like, it is a brick, it is like solid. Another great thing to have that I have realized that I would really like to get is a dress form. I recently self-drafted quite a few things, including a, a denim skirt that I upcycled from a pair of jeans. And it was kind of hard to find where the fabric was gonna drape properly because uh, I didn't have a dress form. I just had a stiff form and it was challenging. I think I got there in the end. The fit is mostly okay, but yeah, I think I'm gonna look to get a dress form. I have also heard that a dress form that is made to your size, if you're just sewing for yourself, then that's great. A dress form that is not an adjustable one is much easier to work with than the ones that have the little dials that are adjustable. So if you're thinking about getting a dress form, that's some feedback that I have heard based on other people's experiences, certainly not on my own experience because I don't have dress form. <laughs> and finally, the last thing that is a great thing to have in your sewing arsenal, your sewing cupboard, your sewing, um, what am I trying to say? Sewing toolkit is an overlocker, also known as a serger. That's a type of machine that does that very satisfying finishing on the edge of fabric. You can make so many things without an overlocker. It is not an essential thing that you need to have. I didn't have one. I was sewing regularly and I didn't have one for about five years. And then I got it as a gift from my mum again. <laughs> I feel like my mum really like encouraged me to, to do this sewing thing, which is great because now we like hang out and do sewing together, which is excellent. Um, Overlocker finishes off, ow, that pin stabbed me. Finishes off the edge of fabrics. 
but you really don't need to do this. Uh, you can use a zigzag stitch if your machine comes with that option. You can use pinking shears to finish off raw edges. You can get really fancy and make everything with French seams if you want to. That's, that's, that's allowed. You can do a flat felt seam. So many options, so many options. But I would say that the things that I use the most the things that make my life so much easier when I am sewing is my pin cushion, my wrist pin cushion. You have no idea how long I lived without a wrist pin cushion. I'm really glad I got, I got it. I used to use another one, which was beautiful that my sister gave me. I have to show you guys. She bought this in Japan for me and it's gorgeous and it's made of silk and it's lovely. It's like a little cherry blossom flower. It's beautiful, but when you're trying to like pin stuff, it like slides around the place. It's beautiful, but I don't, I don't use it anymore. I use it sometimes, but not anymore because I got my I got my trusty little cheap wrist guy. And that's really all I'm going to talk about today. Uh, are there other items that I have totally forgotten about? I'm sure there are. Let me know what they are in the comments below. Share with the community here about the other things that are useful while you're sewing. I think it's just a matter of finding what works for you. And if you feel like you need another item in your toolkit, then go ahead and get it. I'm gonna go do some sewing. Keep an eye out again for the poll that's gonna be on the community page about the upcoming projects that I have. I'm gonna probably take your guys' input on what you wanna see next, so let me know. There is also a risk that you guys are gonna vote and I'm just gonna ignore what you want. That's my prerogative though, so please don't be upset if that happens. <laughs> Thanks for being here, as always, and I will see you next time. Bye.